video tutorial, we're going to take the uh, custom mix that we downloaded for Lion and the Lamb uh, from Multitracks.com, and we're going to insert uh, that as a backing track uh, into our uh, project that we're preparing for Sunday morning. Uh, uh, we're using the, the DAW we're using is Logic Pro X, and you can use any DAW. Logic Pro is, is uh, working great for me. Uh, it does several things, like I can create a score for, uh, for uh, horns players, uh, people playing trumpet or sax or flute or whatever. Uh, I can create basically uh, uh, a score that they can play on a separate screen. I can hook my laptop up to a second screen, and they can, uh, they can read that sheet music uh, during... Uh, during a, a live performance, uh, but I don't want to get into a lot of details and a lot of the things that Logic Pro can do for you. Um, uh, we can do that in later videos. Uh, most people, uh, just a little uh, disclaimer, most people use Ableton for sequencing uh, backing tracks and, and everything in, in, uh, in, live, uh, in the live setting. Uh, so, uh, just take that into consideration. I like Logic Pro X. It does several things that Ableton doesn't do, doesn't do, but also Ableton does some things and makes some things easier that Logic Pro really doesn't do either. So, uh, all that having been said, let's start by uh, locating the file. I've, it actually shows up in the downloads folder, uh, and then I moved it over to Music, and then put it into a folder called Multitracks. So we'll open that. Um, and uh, we're looking for Lion and the Lamb. There it is. Okay, so if we look in, in this folder, we'll see a click track file, an auto panned file. This is the split track that I talked about in the previous, if you read the comments of the previous video. Uh, when you buy a custom mix, they give you uh, this copy that, uh, that has the, the click and the guidance panned right and the rest of the music panned left, and I may have my left and right mixed up there. I'm not really sure. But anyway, that's what it does. So if you were running from your PA booth, uh, or if you run it, you could run it from on stage like that too. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't use this. Uh, what I use is basically the custom mix itself that I mixed. I mixed the guitars just a little bit low in this mix, turned off the drums and the bass. So uh, I'm going to drag that. Let me move this so we can actually see where our destination uh, is going to be. Uh, I'm going to drag that into this project, into this Logic Pro project, uh, into the backing tracks. So here we go. And it'll uh, import that. And then I also want to move the guidance over, so I'm going to pull this guide file over. So it's basically rendering some, uh, rendering that M4P into WAV format. Uh, I think they call it a dot AIF. Um, so okay, so that's that. Now we do something else here that most people don't do. Uh, we actually listen to the reference material in our ears all the time. So I'm going to go to. Uh, iTunes and open up iTunes and then look for Lion and the Lamb. Uh, I have the the Bethel uh, the Bethel uh, 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 Have It All album, the, their most recent album. So let me look for Lion and the Lamb. Okay. Okay. So there it is. So that's the that's the actual uh, released version from Bethel. So I'm going to drag that in here on this track that I've called Reference. Now one thing I haven't done is I haven't really talked about, uh, there's all kinds of tracks that you set up in your project. I'm not going to talk about a lot of those today. I'd particularly like to talk about this one, uh, but I don't really have the time in this video to talk about that. Uh, we're just basically focusing on these three. So we're going to have, in our ears, we're going to have reference material that we're listening to. It's going to be turned down, though, really low. Uh, we're going to have guidance. 
that we'll be listening to, telling us, you know, the, the intro or the verse is coming up, whatever. Uh, and then we're also going to be tr playing uh, on a separate output. Uh, we're going to be playing uh, an actual backing track, which is what I mixed on the uh, multitracks.com uh, website. Okay, so this stuff is, these two are lined up because they came from the, the downloaded uh, backing track, custom mix package, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my reference material is not lined up. So uh, I'm going to play it a little bit. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now another thing that you may notice too, uh, there's other information too. Up here in the top, this is the arrangement track. Uh, I've already set the BP. I've already I've already checked out the BPMs. The BPMs were 90 uh, on the uh, uh, 90 beats per minute on the uh, multitracks website. So I've already uh, I've already basically added uh, added a a marker for that. I'm going to delete that one. Uh, and drug it down to 90 uh, because the previous song was at a at a different beats per minute 153. Uh, this song and don't don't pay it by the way up here in the header. Don't pay attention to the key signature that doesn't really doesn't really apply to what we're doing today. Um, okay, so basically I just want to get all this stuff sequenced right and lined up right uh, in 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 the timeline. So let's one. Let's see what we've got here. One, two, three, four. Intro. Intro. Okay, you can tell that that's just a big mess. So uh, let me let me do just a couple of things. I've ar actually already done this, so if it looks like I really know what I'm doing, uh, or it looks like I'm I'm getting lucky, maybe. Uh, it's because I've already done this once and then forgot that I needed to shoot a tutorial of doing this. So, uh, so I had to come back and do it again. I think this is going to get me pretty close to the ballpark, but I'm going to make some other changes to this in a moment that uh, hopefully will make sense. But anyway, here we go. Let's play that. One, again. two, one, two, three, four. Intro. 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 Verse. Okay, so the verse started right there. It says verse and then gives you uh, three more counts after that, and the verse starts. So basically, uh, basically that's how in-ear metronome and guidance works. By the way, uh, there was another another thing that came in that custom the custom mix package. I think I closed it already. Uh, let me get that open again. Uh, maybe the click track. Yes, the click track. I don't use that because Logic Pro. If you get your BPM set right. Logic Pro has a metronome that you can turn on and off. So I would rather do it that way uh, to each his own. You could set up a totally uh, a, a totally separate, uh, set up another audio track and drop that click in if you want. But, uh, you know, if I, I trust that I can get everything set up right. So, okay, I'm going to do a couple of things here, and these are really just judgment calls. But um, I don't like how they started the, the click here. Uh, I'm sorry, the guidance here. So, uh, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, there's just a, there's just a, a couple quick things I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm adding, uh, this is extra information that maybe would be better served in another tutorial, but I'm adding a, an arrangement marker up here and I'm going to delete. Uh, and in doing so, you'll see everything below it, all this stuff below it, uh, will. Or delete. So I hit delete one time, I'm hitting delete again, and, and it collapses the timeline back. Um, I'm doing that because I don't need that initial count of one and two. It's just extra dead space at the beginning of our song set, so I'm just getting rid of that. So one, two, three, four. So the audio actually starts right there. Um, I don't really need this count. Nobody's playing 
in the fur in this this region here, the beginning of this song, it's really just being done by this loop that we're hearing, the the synth loop or keys, keys and piano, whatever it was. So that's really the only thing that's playing at the beginning beginning of the song. So rather than do the same thing that I just did and delete this this whole uh, measure here as well, I'm actually going to jip. Uh, two, three, and four here, the count of two, three, and four. Um, and hopefully this will make sense once uh, once I do it. And I'm hitting control, uh, control T to cut. Uh, so, so I've cut it in two different spots. I say control T, I apologize. I'm an old PC user. Uh, command T. And basically I'm going to move this down here and if you really don't know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but if you really don't know, you could actually, I'm going to hit Control Z to undo uh, a few times. You could actually go right here and hit Control V to paste. Oh, there's no matching data on the clipboard. It's because I just drag it over. Okay, I'm sorry. Doing all this again, wasting your time. But uh, basically, you could hit Control uh, Command X to cut from there. So anytime you hear me, you know, be suspicious anytime you hear me see control because it's actually, it's actually command that I usually mean. I apologize, I'm an old PC user. Deleting that. Don't need this to say intro here. We all know that's an intro, so I'm going to uh, select the region. I'm going to hit command T to cut again. And actually, I could have probably cut it over here. Let me just go ahead and clean that up a little bit. It's just dead space. It doesn't matter, but just making it make more sense to me. Okay. So basically, uh, the music doesn't start until there. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to basically do the same thing I, I did uh, again with the arrangement track and just cut out a whole nother measure because I just don't, I don't need that dead space. It doesn't help me. All right. So let's see if this makes sense once uh, once we get rolling. Intro two three four. The intro started right there on the one the imaginary one count. Intro. Then the intro again. Okay, something I want you to notice right there is there's imaginary counting going on. If I if I were setting these counts up myself, I'd go ahead and put the counts. Uh, I wouldn't leave it to the imagination. I would I would put the actual counts in there. But uh, the way Multitracks does it is fine. Uh, so basically, the band just has to be trained that when you hear the word verse, imagine that you're going to have a, a count of two, three, four, and then you're going to start the verse. After that, so you're going to hear basically verse, and then you're going to start. Uh, that's basically how how it works. Multi tracks, like I say, when I set up the count, the guidance myself, uh, which I can show on another video, I actually you go ahead and put those other numbers in there as much as as makes sense. So I'm going to count for you just so you can um, just be able to kind of hear and visualize where the verse is going to start. <laughs> Verse. Two, three, four, begin. So where I said begin is basically where the verse begins. So you can see that uh, the click, the guidance, the backing tracks, everything together makes this a really uh, uh, great way to run a song on Sunday morning. Let me go back and I'm just going to solo out this backing track. Just I'm going to turn off the metronome. Intro, two, three, four. So that's what the congregation will be hearing coming through the mains. But of course your whole band will be playing along with that. The uh, congregation will not hear the guidance. They will not hear the click. Uh, they will not even hear the reference material. All that stuff 
is on a separate channel that's just going to our in-ears. Uh, now, I don't necessarily have, I have it set up right now where it's just coming through the main speakers of my laptop, but, but you would set it up, you would set each one of these up to where they're, come, they're actually going to uh, a different output, and you can, it's grayed out right now because I'm not hooked up to my little Firewire uh, output module. Uh, I've got a little PreSonus, uh, I don't remember how many outputs it's got, it's got like eight, eight mic connections on the front of it. It's called a FirePod. It's old. There's newer technology, but this is old and it works just fine. Uh, so anyway, all of all of the guidance, the reference tracks, and the click would be sent to a, a, another output, an auxiliary output. Uh, in this case, for me, it's outputs three and four, uh, and I'm only using three. I'm only using one of those outputs. So that's where that stuff is sent. Uh, the backing tracks are the only thing that's actually being sent to stereo out uh, on Sunday. Uh, and, and coming through the mains along with the rest of what our band is playing, what our singers are singing. So anyway, I hope this uh, makes sense. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a future tutorial, I'd like to talk about how, uh, well, I can actually go ahead and just as a talking point, uh, go ahead and, and do this. But... Um, the way I'm starting to set up our uh, our projects is instead of up to this point, what I've done is I've created a new project for each Sunday, and uh, that's getting really old. So, um, so what I'm starting to do is we're going to have a running uh, project file that has the songs that we're doing, and it'll be really long. It'll have 15, 20 songs in it. Uh, I don't know how big a file, how long a file I can make uh, in uh, Logic Pro, but I'm going to find out, okay? So once I find out, I'll let you know. But uh, basically what you would do is create, you know, put all your songs under one roof, so to speak. Put them all in one project, and then, and then uh, as you're putting together your set for Sunday, you just go to the song that you've already done, you've already built the the, the, the tracks for it, and you drag it to the beginning. So, so I can start here on Sunday, and then I'll have my second song after it. It's not going to be our guy; it'll be something else. Um, and so, so you can have one long project, and, and bands do this all the time. They usually use Ableton, but they have one project file that has all of their songs in it for for the whole show. So that might be ten, twelve songs, but. Uh, that one project houses all of the material that they'll be doing on any given night. And they can rearrange that stuff on the fly. They can do whatever they want to do. Um, Logic Pro X is a little bit more restrictive. You can't do as much on the fly. But there's a lot of things that you can do that, like I said, Ableton's not able to do. So I hope this tutorial kind of showed you uh, just a follow-up uh, you know, yes, we created a custom mix and we downloaded it from uh, from multitracks.com. But what do we do after that? So this kind of shows you uh, what we do to get that song ready uh, for live uh, playback uh, on Sunday morning.